Happy Independence Day, everybody. I'm here at iFanboy Headquarters Midwest setting up for our big Independence Day barbecue. Typically, we celebrate this holiday with cookouts and firecrackers. Sadly, my probation doesn't allow me to buy firecrackers. However, I am finding a few other ways to celebrate, like reading up on the history of our founding fathers. We have to give thanks to people like George Washington, Abe Lincoln, Sam Adams, Samuel Adams Light, Samuel Adams Boston Lager, Betsy Ross, her sister Diana Ross, Eli Whitney, he did the cotton gin, Whitney Houston, Captain America, of course, uh, Uncle Sam and Evil Knievel, Super Dave Osborne, uh, Babe Ruth, Lindsay Lohan, um, you know, Johnny Depp, even though he lives in France, but I think they're their own country too. What? What? Ooh. Apparently I'm supposed to be doing the promo. So, this week's episode of iFanboy is brought to you by Netflix.com. Go to www.netflix.com slash iFanboy for a free two-week trial. Or, and, www.godaddy.com. Enter the coupon code iFanboy for 10% off all your purchases. Happy Independence Day. It's an iFanboy barbecue! Yay! Yay! Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> Yay! Hey. Look, I can spell Spider-Man. <laughs> Don't forget the dash. Hey, watch the eyes. <laughs> Welcome to iFanboy, the video podcast from the comic book discussion site, iFanboy.com. I am Josh, and I'm here with... Ron. Who's flaming. He's festive. And of course... Connor. Hello. Uh, well, it's summertime. We thought we'd have the first annual iFanboy barbecue, and... Because at iFanboy, we love meat. We love meat. We love comics. And, and we, we love, love... Fireworks. Fireworks, and we love our listener mail. Oddly enough, those three things are a really bad combination. Right. right. Meat, so, flames, But we do love... Listen, we, we've asked you to write in some, some questions. We love answering them, so we've got a couple here to, to kind of talk over the grill. Right, so... we thought, it's, you're our family. Yeah, so come. So, so we got food. We got food coming on here. We got some, some steaks uh, already going. We got some corn. Nice. And we got some other stuff we're going to add in a bit. So well, we're going to get to the mail first. Um, all right. While y'all do this, Ron, you want to add put some of this uh, chicken, oh, sure. chicken on there while I'm doing it? All right, this. sure thing. Let me get rid of that. Here Thank you, go. Josh, for that. We've got some wings here. Do you want chicken wings? Yeah, yep, do. there you go. Yeah, Take that. Thank you. First question comes from Philip M. He says, love the show, big fan. My question is, which do you prefer, Marvel's Omnibus series or DC's Absolute Editions? Don't take into account the number of Omnibus or Absolute Editions. That was weird. I don't know what that was. <laughs> uh, because DC would obviously win that battle. Rather, in a head-to-head -head challenge between Marvel's best Omnibus and DC's top Absolute, which would you take? Personally, I love the Absolute Dark Knight. It's a weight in size. Contains one of the greatest graphic novels of all time. Looks sexy on the shelf. However, I found myself smiling from ear to ear more than two weeks ago as I poured through 100, all 1,000 plus pages of the new X-Men Omnibus. So, which one would you prefer? If you gotta, if you gotta choose one style, that's which tough, one is that's it? That's a tough question. I hate these, pick one or the other when they're both yeah. available things. There's well, a lot of binary questions Here's the thing, yeah. is that I'm a Marvel guy. That's probably too hot. Yeah, turn that a little bit. Um, I'm a Marvel guy. And so while I love having the omnibuses, having them all be because they're thick. I mean, I've got the Fantastic Four. They're impressive. And, yeah, they are impressive. I got the Fantastic Four, and I've got the uh, uh, Uncanny X Men one. My problem with it is that they're not oversized. I mean, they're oversized. They're a little bit. They're, a little, they're bit, a little yeah. oversized. The absolutes are punkin' huge. I mean, they're, those are those are sweet. I mean, you know, like I love my absolute editions. You know what it comes? To, I think it comes down to is not only do the absolutes have the extras that they really don't get in the omnibus, mm -hmm. the omnibuses aren't comprehensive. You know, yeah. like your biggest pet peeve was, remember they stopped in the middle of the Dark Phoenix saga? They stopped when they ran out of pages. Like, yeah, like when they ran out of, you know, like they had respect. a page count that will fit in what we can. Well, because without... the, th the thing is, the omnibuses are collecting everything from a run, right. whereas the, the absolutes seem to be specific to a storyline. You know, like um, like Dark Knight or uh, Kingdom Come or New, New Frontier. Where the omnibuses have it over the, the absolutes is, the absolutes are more for an event. 
Dark Knight's an event, Watchmen's right. an event, New Frontier's an event. If you want the whole run of Fantastic Four or Amazing Spider-Man or, or Uncanny X-Men, you then that's perfect. The the omnibus is perfect for that. I right? got to tell you, I was in the store the other day and I saw the Spider-Man and I saw the Daredevil omnibuses and those look damn sexy. But then I just saw your long I, I saw your long Halloween Absolute and that looks damn sexy. The yeah. Spider-Man yeah. one is really imp- like I, I don't, it's, it's, I don't it's really like even want to read those all that much. But it's just so it's, it's so big and it's like it's good to have them all. But the funny thing is, is that I have the DVD. I have, oh, I'm, I'm, it's festive. <laughs> I have the DVD of all the Spider-Mans, but I also, and I have some of the issues, mm-hmm. but I also, you know, like I want the Omnibus. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, it's the comprehensive nature of it. You know, it's, yeah. all one, it's all in one volume. You got it right there. You got they're the whole really, story. They're really playing into the comic reader's need to have everything. Yeah. Right. And I am fighting that. It's Because uh, you know what? I, I can't afford to buy all of those. So which one's the better, the better format? For me, I I, I, I don't know. I don't have any omnibuses, so it's hard right. for me to say. I like the presentation of the of the of the absolute ones because they're. It's like you said, it's a special thing. Yeah. Like you know, I don't mind having trade paperbacks and stuff. I don't need to have everything in a giant one. But some of those stories, like the Watchmen, ab, the Absolute Watchmen. That's that deserves that. And yeah, that needs right. that. And, I'm and I think the packaging. I mean, the packaging is good in the omnibus, but, the, but the, with the absolute, you get the little, you know, the little placeholder ribbon, yeah. and you have the, oh, the extra the and the, just the size and the smell. The like the omnibuses great. don't yeah. smell like the absolutes yeah. do. I mean, they're so good. So I think I think I'm gonna go on a limb and say, if the three of us had to choose one format, it would be yeah. the absolute format. Yeah, absolutely. I haven't okay, bought good. any of the omnibus ones, so I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Good yeah, point. Yeah. All right. So the question, second question is from Bo. Bo says, I've been a huge comic book fan for about 10 years or so, and I had, however, stopped buying comics. One Superman split into two characters, all the, all the lightning crapped. <laughs> we, we talked about that in the previous episode. We did, episode, we did. Didn't yeah. we? <laughs> but about two years ago, I started reading again and buying and collecting mainly the Green Lantern, Hal Jordan, and Iron Man books. And I picked up a few Ultimate titles that were really good. The question is, when should a superhero stay dead? Not that I want to play devil's advocate, but I can understand from a business point of view, Superman can't stay, stay dead for very long. Other heroes like Hal Jordan, I mean, I'm a huge Green Lantern fan, and, and to me, Hal's the only Green Lantern. I, I grew up on Kyle for the most part and had a distaste for his storyline. But, ha- but Hal should have stayed <laughs> Hal should have stayed dead, and I thought that when he died, he would stay dead for sure, without a doubt. The whole Spectre thing made sense, um, but he was still dead as a, the Spectre. Right. And about Civil War, now that Captain America's dead, um, will he be dead for good, or is it going to be a fake-out? When should a hero stay dead? Like, is, it, is, is there any time it should happen? Uh, well, no. Like, really should stay I mean, dead. It, the, the old conventional wisdom was Bucky and Jason Todd. Those are the two untouchable characters, right? Yeah, exactly. They had, to say that, they had to say that. Exactly. Right? But exactly. no. I mean, the thing is, there shouldn't be a rule. Because if there's a rule, then you know. Right. And the fact is, right now, you don't know. Now, do I want Captain America to stay dead? No. Do I want the story where he died to matter? Yes. Right. So there's like a fine line. And I think that you'll see periods where they go through comics when they do it wrong a lot. I think you, you talk about Jean Grey. There's yeah. a character that they didn't respect that enough. Keep in mind, she's only died twice. Okay, or, or Charles Xavier. Right, he's right. died about yeah, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like where you don't... They haven't respected that enough. Like, right. where they're at the point now when they kill him, everyone's like... Oh, he's dead yeah. again. Yeah. yeah, so it doesn't really matter so much. Um, now, is it... Hal Jordan, though, I mean, they stuck with it for a long time. They did. The thing with Hal Jordan was... Now, everyone who's, who really listens to our weekly show and watches this um, knows I don't, I don't really like Kyle. I like Hal. On the other hand, I kind of thought he should have stayed dead. How? I mean, I wanted him to come back, and I was. I thought him. when he came back as the Spectre, mm-hmm. that was the real kind of kick in the ass. That was the real kind of you know. Because it wasn't him. And yeah, they did it. Was they like, did yeah. it with somebody else as the Spectre, right. who I didn't want. To Crispus. Be. Does that happen? Crispus, yeah. He's still a Spectre. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, but then you take the other side of it, and you yeah. look at Barry Allen. Yeah. Now, his death is meaningful and important. It happened. I don't want him coming back. Right. right exactly. But he doesn't need to. And, but they but they brought him back, but not they in no, no. But they've they've done the, the, the time like, travel. Like time Captain, travel. Yeah. Captain Marvel recently, How, where, the, who uh, one of the Marvel's greatest mm-hmm. murder not murders but deaths, uh-huh. and they brought him back, but they snapped him out of time from before he died. You know. Right, but so. but then you take um, oh I'm losing it. I had it. Holly Queen. Yes. I'm glad he's back. Yeah. Yeah. I want. Yeah. He's. You know what? He went out like a punk. Here's the, the difference. Yeah. This is this is where I think the difference comes Hawk in. Hawkeye. Oliver Queen. Not like this. Well, he wasn't dead for very long. It didn't matter. About a month. <laughs> Oliver Queen's death <laughs> didn't, mean, didn't mean anything, right? Can you even tell me the storyline where he died? I have no idea. Exactly. But Captain America and Barry Allen, the Final Night right, Superman. Right, right. But he he doesn't. Well, know. I didn't even read that. It's I and I and I. Yeah. Captain America had a meaningful death. Barry Allen had a meaningful death. I think if any time you have to keep somebody dead. The meaningful death is the way to go. Exactly, but the story of bringing them back, if it's if it's good, I mean, because because B- Bucky, you know, I was the biggest critic when Bucky came back. You right. know, like I, I, you know, Bucky's sacred ground. Don't bring back Bucky. Brubaker did it, man. He nailed it. It was great. You know, Jason Todd, on the other hand, you feel ripped off. 
You don't know how it happened, though. It, it's the rip in the time that that's the causing all the multiverse problems. That's really all it was. It's, rip in time. Yeah. So that's I mean, character <laughs> super shed. Ron, let's. Um, no, I'll talk about my steak first. Okay. What we've got going here is is uh, we got a nice filet mignon. Mmm, nice. That's a thick one. Uh, we put a little bit of uh, pepper and salt. That's it. You want you want fresh ground pepper fresh and ground sea pepper. salt as opposed to table salt or yep. table pepper. So on we you. got sea salt on there. We got fresh ground pepper. Bit of I find my controversy in the way they cook it. Uh, this is schism. I prefer to let the slow cook go first before I put it on the high, uh, just because of the thickness. I like it to be cooked all the way through. Josh's Josh's I, I would char it over high heat. Josh's first, Josh's a charer move. raw in the middle. Here's, I like it cooked all the way through. Here's something that is a tip. Uh, you do want to uh, use the the meat as close to room temperature as possible. You don't want to take it straight out of the fridge and put it on the grill. Right, it's bad. that's a good lesson. It's very good. So that's that's steak number one. We'll get to the other steaks in a minute. Ron, you want to um, take us take, take the next batch? Yeah. All right. So um, we back, should probably though. be you should be rotating these as we roll. So don't tell I, me how to touch my meat. Whoa. Sorry. Yikes. Instead All right, of so rotating, he's, he's, put he's more adding on. more. Yeah, he's adding more. We're not going to be able to cook anything. Um, well, these, these still have to cook a little All bit All right, more. so our, our next question comes from Kevin from Florida. Um, and he actually, speaking from our previous, um, he's the proud owner of a new X-Men omnibus. Oh, there you so, go. Way to go, Kevin. Um, so Kevin um, said he knows that we um, that we slandered the initial backup of Ultimate Vision from the Ultimate Galactus Slandered story. would be lying about it. Yeah, we didn't but, lie. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we told the truth. But he wanted to um, recommend, 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 recommend the subsequent... Macrom- the subsequent miniseries about Ultimate Fritz Lang Metralobot. It's actually really intriguing with Mike Carey writing, who's a big fan of yours. Josh, you're a big fan of. I have He's no, a, I have, a fan of yours. I have no... He's a big he, fan of yours. He was a very nice guy, so maybe he was. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, so Mike Carey wrote it, and has more action in the first two issues than the entire Galacticus set. That would not be hard. In the Ultimate series. The art is also surprisingly good from someone named someone named Brandon Peterson. <laughs> never heard of this Brandon Peterson. He's only um, been around for a while. He's who he's never heard of. Um, thus far, a crazed scientist has tricked Vision into activating a part of the Galactus fleet, but Galactus has fought back and overtaken the scientist's facility. I know, deep, right? But still, it's been pretty good and far better than the one-page equals one-second real-time adventure of the previous backups. So yeah, the mini is only five issues long, so how much pain could buying the first issues really cause you? The only difficulty you might encounter are finding the issues because they sold out almost instantly due to the large group of Ultimate Vision Sexbox fans. Is, that, is, so, he, is he being facetious there? It's hard to tell. Hard to tell. But so I guess this question is based off, you know, based off of our, our violent reaction to the Ultimate Vision character. I don't know if it was violent. We were, we were pretty vocal. overstating it. We were pretty vocal. It was pretty amused. amused. It was yeah. more bemused. Would you read this miniseries? No, no. I don't care. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not really, yeah, neither would I. I mean, I, mean you know, I, I like Mike Carey, but yeah. I don't really like his superhero work. I, yeah. I, he's really hasn't done anything superhero-wise that's made me very happy. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I just don't care. Like, the thing is... It takes a lot to make you interested in the character, I right. think. And uh, I just... There's enough stuff out there that a story to me that is pitched as pretty good... Yeah. It's not enough. No. Yeah. You know what it is? I like the, I like the fact that it, it evokes Fritz Lang's Metropolis. I like that's a kind of clever cool. use of it. Yeah. I didn't see the need for an Ultimate Vision character. I didn't see the need for an Ultimate Vision... Well, I didn't see an old need for an Ultimate Vision character, again, stepping away from the Vision's origin in 616. Like, I didn't see, like no, the fact that, that Vision was related to Galactus. It was like a herald of That doesn't make a difference to me. It's more of yeah. like, of all the things to, to give a book to... Ultimate Vision and, and the fact that the first it's, it's funny because Vision isn't a character they've used up in the real Marvel universe right. it's, it's actually not one of like, the best characters if you ask me he is and where's he been lately there's so much yeah. more that they can is he dead, dead. It's, no no it's the young Avengers Vision right but he's now Victor. the old Vision Is the, old, the new Vision is the old Vision the new Vision is the old Vision but younger it's a younger body. That's what I mean. He's, he's, yeah. he's got a new body. Yeah, but he's got the Vision's computer okay. brain. But he's got the That's memories of all the yeah. stuff. Except to, in Civil War when he looked like the regular Vision. Exactly. I used to love Vision, the old Burn Adventure comics. So good. Yeah. He was yellow, the, you picked him up on the yellow when he was the yellow Vision. I liked mm-hmm. the old red and red and. Uh, no, he was green. red and green. Yeah, he, was, he was yellow and green. No, he was yellow Unlike for myself all those with a red face. Remember the, all those years he was yellow? Mm. Yes, he was in A. When you were reading oh, West Coast Avengers. Yes. And then in West Coast Avengers, he was all silver. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought yellow. I mean, it was like a pale yellow. Yeah, White silver. silver. Yeah. He was all one shade, and that yeah. was after his his. You were colorblind, apparently. Uh, and then and then they had the fake children. Yes, with the well, that's, 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 that's what kicked yeah. off the. That's what kicked off. But the that, he was great in that, those, those old Avengers so books. Yeah. Yeah. Hawkeye and, and and Beast and Vision. Which was why we were really into uh, the Earth Mightiest Heroes two. Yep. Right. Yes. So, all right. So, so thank you, Kevin. Um, so, our next question comes from Steve B. Um, and he had a question that it might be fun to, for us to fun to answer. Um, he was curious. It better if, be. He was curious if we really know what drives the cost of comic books. He knows some would call the co- cost of comics a bit pricey these days, but it seems pretty much across the industry the standard rate is about two ninety nine. 
Uh, this really spans across, com across companies too. Just like doing some browsing, he sees 225, 250, 399, all around about three dollars per comic. And I'm assuming a 22 page, you know, standard comic. Um, he can understand bigger companies like DC and Marvel, where there are salaries to pay and higher marketing costs. Sorry, there's just something, <laughs> something, something <laughs> popping in there. I've got a whole economic thing to go. Anyway, so um, there are higher marketing costs, more notoriety from writers and artists that can drive prices up. But with some indies, they're likely to be a little cheaper. I know he knows from a pure economical standpoint that three dollars is, is most likely really helping to stay afloat. But he's surprised there aren't more that are cheaper. As a musician and longtime music fan, especially indie music, as we are, um, he has to draw some comparisons there. I know from an indie record label standpoint that they will sell their CDs records and merch cheaper because there's not as big of a machine as the big five or four or three record companies. Um, he can get a CD from an indie label for eight bucks versus getting a major label release from a big box store like Best Buy for 14 if you're lucky. They're like 18 now. Anyway. I so, haven't bought a CD in so long. I don't know how much they are. That's not true. I bought them so, Amazon like 10 bucks all the time. Well, so, that's what I mean, but I haven't got a story. Yeah, yeah. He was just curious as to whether there's been any backlash from comic book fans who have shown distaste. Like the trade paper, like the trade paperback sales go up with people buying less issues, etc. Anything you can get me, anything you could let me in on would be great. Well, because we have some. We should we should lead with I don't know. We can make a real good guess. I can't say everything's going to be speculation from here. On out. Well, no. One thing that isn't a speculation is that you can say that the reason that a Marvel comic costs three bucks is because they have a higher overhead, which you were talking about. However, they also the have the costs. benefits of uh, economies of scale. Very good point. Which it means that it costs them less to produce a single issue than it does for, say, Antarctic Press or or Top Shelf or something like or that. Or, yeah. or guy who's or doing Joe it by Smith's themselves. comics is putting his own right. or, yeah. or Boom. Yeah, right. he's well. Boom Studios comics are actually up to four bucks. Yeah. And, um, I think for the most part. Yeah. But you know, like if you print fifteen hundred comics, you're gonna spend a lot more money per comic. No, go ahead. You can talk. Yeah, I'm no, just, no, just saying that looks good. Doesn't it? I yeah, think I got a, a face full of smoke. <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, tasty. Tasty. Oh, look at that. Oh, <laughs> keep talking, buddy. Um, <laughs> he's trying to tempt me. That's why you gotta close you gotta it. Gotta be careful, right the under the heat. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. You got the heat going. Yeah. I'm fine. Um, move them around a little. It's All the right. sugar that burns. All right. Anyway, so go ahead. Keep talking, buddy. I've lost my train of thought with the meat. Overhead. 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 So the, you know, there's that. I don't. The thing is. People are bitching about comics, and I think that again, it also about the price. It all again relates to economies of scale because it's such a specialized item. You know, oh. they're making less of them. Only so, a few people are buying them. Only well, here's the, here's fifteen thousand people buy a comic. It's got to cost enough where they and can. And whether make some trades of are costing those issues, I don't think so. I think trades are just another way that they can a make money or that you can b consume it. You don't think there's a factor because let, let's say that an average trade comes out and it's fifteen dollars. That's about the cost. I think of trades it. are actually cheaper than their individual issues. Exactly. That's my point. If the comic is three. $3, there's six issues in the comic. But think about the cost that goes into it. You've only got to ship a trade once. You don't have to ship a trade six times. Well, as right. long as there's printings. Right. Yeah. You know, as long, but it's just, uh, you know, and the, I think to me, it, it just represents choice. Like, there's different ways that you can do it. Um, I don't know if, 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 the thing is, if a trade costs issues, issues, it doesn't matter because in the end, it all gets made up. Right. The, the issues are, you know, the the story, the work is still being consumed. Right. Well, I, I mean, I think that I think the music comparison is very good. I mean, like for years, I, I've I've been a fan of indie music stuff like that, and there are labels like Discord, which for year were doing eight dollar CDs in the '90s when everybody was starting to charge 16, 17 bucks because they broke down the cost of how much CDs were and how much they were to to produce, and said, you know, listen, we we want to make enough to continue our business, but we're not being overly Greedy. I don't know if that's exactly what's happening here, but I think what's interesting is a trend like we're seeing with like Fell and other. Fell is a good example of a cheaper comic. It's $1.99. $1 but they have the image pages. behind them. True. Right. To, to, to you know, so they have those connections and those yeah. with the printers. They can say, "Listen, we brought you all this other business. We want to do this." Now, is right. is the printing aspect the problem? Like the fact that I couldn't go out to a Quebec Corps or whoever and say, "Here's my comic. Can you print it cheap?" And they'll be the, like, "Sorry, no." The, the thing is, is that paper is going up, yeah. and paper's getting better. Yeah. Look at the comics that you paid seventy five cents for. Yeah. Right now, exactly they look that. like shit now. They're probably they're degrading. Yellow. They're probably degrading in Europe. What, what price change hurt the most? Because here's the thing. I know. I can tell you exactly. Two ninety nine. I bad an eye. Like whatever. When it went from a dollar to a dollar twenty five, I was like. Bollocks! I was like, those dollar, bastards. A dollar, the dollar twenty-five was the dollar twenty-five switchover was hard. I like go to the, the comic 80s? store in junior yeah. high school with five dollars yeah. and get five comics, and when I went in and went up, I got four comics, and that was I, where I went. I yep. remember. Damn it! In the yep. time that I was reading, they basically went from seventy-five to a dollar fifty. Mm -hmm. yep. Now the dollar fifty, the Punisher War journals, that's the one that I remember. I remember that, yep. uh, the dollar fifty one, yeah, like I remember thinking, oh, those are expensive, but then that became the standard. Now to me, that was the thing. Yeah. That, 
sort of put me over. But then when I came back, they were all three bucks. And the fact is, they haven't <laughs> gone up in a while. <laughs> not not any, any I guess, real. You know, it's kind of like it's kind of like gas prices. They, they yeah. just keep going like, up. We keep it's buying. It's like them. back in the '70s, gas prices went up, but everybody stopped driving. They carpooled, but whatever stuff. Like, now we're like, oh, three fifty. Damn it! Look at those prices. You know, well, like you know. Well, you know. it's a specialized market now. Yeah. We'll we'll pay for it. And, yeah. and you know, the fact is, if they sold. Five, ten million copies of a comic book like they used to, you wouldn't yeah. be paying three bucks an issue. You are, yeah, well, maybe. Well, you, if they could figure out, you would, but they also figure you will pay it. Yeah. But the guys doing indie comics, they're not getting paid for that. They're covering their costs. They're the just most trying to get. The, they're just trying to get. And the thing they're is, they're trying to break even. They're trying to break even and get notor, notor, notarized. <laughs> so notarized. Notarized. Uh, get, no, get notable so that they um, so that they can get work from the other from the other companies. So, That's right. Yeah. So. so, Ron, why don't you tell us about what you got going on here? All right. Well, I uh, I saw Connor That's pick up his fillet, and I was like, "Ooh, I want a fillet." So I picked up, and it's a slightly not as thick, but it's a little bigger fillet. And I I, I you know, I, I what are you I, trying to say? I get a little wacky. What are you trying um, to say about your bigger fillet? What I did was, ooh, I've got well, a whole. Well, Connor's is more stout. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Ron's is more spread out. So really, you yeah, got more surface area. You're gonna yeah, cook faster. Exactly. So anyway, um, well, let's also tell them we also failed to mention. I can't talk about my steak apparently. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was gonna say what I did was I I uh, brushed olive oil on it. All right. I pushed some uh, that's slices. Gonna, that's gonna char the surface a little quicker. Some slices of garlic, mm -hmm. um, salt, sea salt, pepper, mm -hmm. and um, that's really it. And then I was I'm just basically riding along with Connor's not char not doing with. Well, that. soon we're gonna have to do that soon. But we got the chicken wings on here. We got yeah. the corn. We got so we've got we got barbecue party wings with some great um, actually. Barbecue rib sauce. With we got we got started. we got three things on the on the wings. We've yeah. got um, a rub, dry rub, a dry rub from Which a place you called. Always want to start with. Yeah, I'll yes. tell you. Put that on first from Rudy, Ruby's Rudy's Rudy's Rudy's, Rudy's barbecue Texas. in Texas. Get the mail order. Um, then we but well, then we got. Well, I didn't go there and buy it. And then we got. Oh, um, no, I've, I've been there before a lot, but I this one I mail ordered. We got some bone sucking sauce, which mm -hmm. is what it's called on the label. We marinated that, and then we got some we put some sugar in the sauce. Put some sugar in. Before before we all mix Why it not? together. So tell them about this. I okay, said. So then also what we got here is we got some sausage or some sausage, as is might known. Um, the Italian Aren't delicacy you? that I grew up calling chivalad. I don't know how to spell or what that means or anything. But what it is is it's it's Italian sausage with parsley and provolone all mixed in with the. Why don't you uh, put that with the ground pork? With the with the ground pork and it got some skewers on here to make it easy to um, do. Can you hold the plate while I yep. take this up? And we just throw it right on the grill, right there. And don't touch the metal. Yes, yeah, so the metal will get hot. So that'll be fun later when we have to pick it up. Yeah, exactly. So I'm kind of worried about where we're going to put these wings. Well, I, I, I cleaned up a plate here because we forgot to okay. bring a plate out. Okay, good. Um, but some of these in the middle we can move off. All right. um, and Josh, Josh still has to get his steak on, doesn't he? I'm waiting because I want to have it on the hot part and it's covered by sausage Ooh. and wings. So. Yeah. All right, so Josh, well, can you hold a plate while well, he he puts he ladles off some there? I'll do the next email. Okay. Uh, where are we? We are um, here. Yeah, right there. Aaron. Aaron from Perry or yeah, Paris, Paris, France. Paris, France. Do they barbecue in Paris? If, if you can, if you if it walked, they'll eat it. Really? Aaron says, I have the luxury of having more than one store in the same street in my city, therefore I have a lot to choose from. On the same street, want more than one store? Yeah, exactly. For about a year now, I've been going... that one back. Okay. Yeah, that's a thick one. Mostly these. Um, for about a year now, I've been going to one in particular because I feel... I, feel, I, I like the feel of it a lot, of the back issues. Every once in a while, I'll find something special there, and a guy talks English, so we talk about comics. He's not French. Ooh. That one. Flip it over. Put it. Yeah. Oh, actually, no, the other way. There okay. Everything was going great until about four, four weeks ago Ooh. when he did not. What happened? Look at that one. That's a good looking one. It's good. That's this, that's the sugar. Sugar yeah. burns, it causes that. It, yeah. Or fat. Either one. Oh, that's going to be good. Sweet. I like them when they get like that. I'd like to eat now. <laughs> but so I'll continue keep reading. Going. Everything was going great. He's got two stores in the block. He likes one because the guy talks English. He's got back issues. Everything was going great until about four weeks ago when he did not get his comics in three weeks in a row, which is a big no-no. So I started looking at the big store down the street, Album Comics. Not only do they get their books in every week, but they have a huge stock of books, a really nice store, and lots of people in, and have hot chicks working the counters, plus a 5% discount on everything in the store. What's more important, the discount or the chicks? Sounds like a sweet deal, huh? So I said, screw it, went to Album. It's not really a question in here. No, well, he wanted to know. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> he wanted to know about breaking up with, com with comic stores. Yeah, yeah. And How do you break up with your comic store? Well, I had this problem. You are is, an expert on this. Which is why I was going to this store in California, and I really liked the store. You want to hear the name of it? Um, no. Okay. Uh, because but the way that the way that his system worked was he had a 20% discount on everything you bought, trades, and issues. Now, for me, that was significant. 
significant. Significant. Um, Smoke inhalation. And it was a little it was a little further away than I would have wanted to go, but I really like the guy who ran the place. How long was the drive to the store? That, that's I, it got worse. Up. Traffic kept getting worse, and it just kept getting well, longer. Because you were in L.A. Yeah, yeah, and getting gas prices started going up and all sorts yeah. of stuff like that, which makes it sound whiny, but whatever. Um, he also had a... He yeah. also had a and this happens a lot with places that have discounts, is that they order comics specifically for their subscription oh. customers. So he'd ordered them... You know, according to my list for me, which meant that if I wanted to drop a title, I had to, I had to give him a few months advance because you, you know, you order three. three yeah, you have. Advance. You're stuck with the. Which really system. bugs you. I won't do it. I know, but like I for do me, I understood it. To me, the discount was worth it, and, and I, I got that. Did so, you buy previews when you did that, or you did it online? No, I just had titles that I went with and whatever. Same I mean, Batman. He buys Batman three months in a row. Uh, uh, anything by Warren Ellis. That sort of thing. I he know some lists are like that. Well, no. Either way, I really like the guy. For you? Huh? He would he, pull well, they, no, like, uh, like you'd get there. Like yeah, he would do that a lot. You didn't yeah. have to buy that or whatever. No. Um, I really like the guy. Uh, I spent a lot of time there. It was one of those shops I like to go in and talk to people and everything. But it got to be with a point where I didn't want to drive that far anymore. And I couldn't take it. And I remember I stalled for months. And finally, I was yeah, like, I, I remember that. You were like, it was like a girlfriend you didn't want to see anymore. You're like, how do I tell her I don't want to go anymore? And, and, and eventually, I just had to do that. That happened to me when I was living on Long Island, um, the store in my town went out of business and I had to go a couple towns over. Actually, the same store that Peter David shops at, uh, Fourth World Comics. And the thing was is that, you know, it was it was hard enough to get to the store on Wednesdays in, in my town, much less mm -hmm. I had to draw, you know, like I, and I ran lights, like to get there before <laughs> they closed because I was working and stuff like that. Oh, it was, it was miserable. And it's, uh, the drive can get, get in the way. The drive was what it was. Yeah. And it turned, there was a really good shop just down the street from where I had started working. Yeah. Really good shop. And they had a discount too, but they didn't have, like, I didn't have any personal service and everything. Great guy. Uh, um, you know, the other shop was good too. It was just, it would take me an hour and a half to it's go really there and good. back. Well, location, 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 right? Right. Especially um, in LA when you've got to sit the freeway traffic. It would just time. get really bad sometimes. And I just had less time. Uh, yeah. It's funny because the other part that he brought up was that the store wasn't getting their shipments. And Connor and I have been going through that a little bit. <laughs> We've been going through, a, Josh and I went to a store for a while who, you know, uh, every week there'd be one missing book, two missing books. Yeah. If they wouldn't get a shipment from UPS, which is the. It's the not shipper. a store's fault, shipper. Yeah. but it was just like, oh, <laughs> and you got to go somewhere else, and and that doesn't count towards your. See, this is whatever. this is one of the reasons why I don't like to form a personal relationship with the stores I go to. What I find really interesting about stores is that, like, like I mean, we know we know some we know a lot of retailers, and we know a lot of people who are um, who are Have a wing. Know, who I'm, run stores. I don't want a wing right now. But right. Thank you. Okay. Um, and that, like they'll like I know a lot of retailers who drive and go meet their UPS guy. To get the books as soon as they can. Yeah, like it's Which fascinating makes sense. to see how much of an effect this is the gonna... smoke has. Whoa! You're flaming. When all the smoke starts coming out like that, that means you've got flame going on. That means right. a bunch of these are done. I agree. This is why I like to be autonomous in the store. Ah, that burned that one. I like to be autonomous in the store and not have to feel like I'm beholden to one because sometimes I'm not near my main store. Sometimes I'm in a different neighborhood. Well, the thing is, you Whoa. know. Nice. The, the thing is, though, both I think both Ron and I have had really good relationships with comic books. Yeah, I mean, I go, to, I go to my store and I hang out. Yeah, and I like them. I consider them my friends. But and I don't have a pull list because sometimes I'll come into the city and hang out with you guys and I'll go shop in the city. You know, and usually if it's a good thing, then they'll get that and whatever. Yeah, yeah they it's, it's when you get, like, I always jealous, tell them. You get the jealous store owner. Yeah. yeah. You went there. Like, well, no, like, I'll come in after a week and be like, where were you last week? I'll be like, oh, I was in the city, so I went there. And they, they give me, oh, damn you. And, yeah. you know, or like, oh, I was out of town, so, you know, like, whatever. But so. a good relationship with your retailer helps because, like, for example, that one store. When I left LA, yeah. he gave me. Uh, uh, I brought in a bunch of old comics that he bought from me, and he gave me more credit and gave me a couple of books because they'd gotten to know me and they yeah. liked me. And, and there and are you're, advantages you're, to you're that. a popular podcaster. He didn't know that. And he didn't care. <laughs> no, it's hysterical. My I, retailers don't. They don't care. They know I do it. I'm like, oh, if you listen to my show, they're like, no. Yeah, it's, it's, well, you know what's funny is that I tried to talk about it one time, and uh, they were just—they just couldn't care less. Yeah. And I wasn't trying to brag, but I was like, I do this, and you know, I was trying to say I could help them out. Yeah, but, uh, on there. well, we need to leave some room for him for a second. Oh yeah, put okay. your steak we flip that or not? Are we good tonight here? Put your steak on, and um, well, we got one more question. So while you're, you want me to, you want me to explain the steak, and then we'll finish up. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Okay, what I have here is a dry aged. Oh, oh, and oh, 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 barbecue foul. Spilled, you know what? Spilled his drink on the steak. Worked. I got a dry aged uh, strip steak, New York strip. Uh, if you had a T-bone or a porterhouse, that's one side of it. The other side is filet, which was what they have. Uh, dry aged just brings out the sort of buttery flavor a little bit more. Strip steak is marbled as opposed to uh, the, the filets. The filets have very little fat right? Uh, and therefore less flavor, but they're more tender. Whereas the strip uh, is not like that. What's Good meat. Uh, doesn't need a lot. You don't put a lot on it. Steak sauce is for shit meat. Uh, oh, I, I disagree with that. Sometimes, but I'm the, a big fan of the Peter Luger sauce. That's and that's fine. 
It, good meat shouldn't eat it. Good meat should. Oh have yeah, no, no. I don't, I don't see it as a way to improve the meat. It's like I like it on the meat. I've got salt and pepper, and that's about it. Uh, buy. Don't cheap out on your meat. That's, buy yeah. good meat if you can got a butcher in the area or something like that. Do don't that. go to Costco. Don't, don't go, get yeah, yeah, don't yeah. Do like the chuck meat that's on sale unless you're making yeah. a stew. It's not good. Yeah. Uh, or well, you're fine. poor and that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, let's be real. Um, <laughs> and I just, like I like to go when I cook steak on a grill. I I'm, I go pretty pink in the middle. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm rare all the way. Rare, medium, rare. Um, all the, way. the way that you I'm, tell, I'm by the way, the, never and never cut a steak in the middle of cooking it. This is a tip. Yeah. Um, you want to tell how done something is by the firmness of the meat. If you press down on it and it bounces back up really fast, that means it's well done. If it takes a little longer, it means it's still rare. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's likened to this area of the thumb. How's mine? Yours feels pretty yours good. Is, Do you think mine's done? Yours is yeah. Yours is pretty close. Yeah. And then when you That's take it off the more. grill, this uh, standard Special. thing is that you want to um, let it sit, right? You want to let it rest for five to ten minutes. Yeah. It lets the juices re re uh, reflow. Yep. All right. Read oh, that last question. All right. So our last question comes from Dan, who's an aspiring comic book writer. Who isn't really? That's what he says. Um, I'm true. not. Um, anyway, <laughs> I'm not I've started plotting. I'm fine with being a comic book podcaster. Those, um, those wings are good, by the way. They are. They came out. The rub is really good. Oh, sausage broke. It's okay though. That's why you have the skewers when it breaks. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Watch this. Ready? Wait. One. Move that wing. Okay. This is gonna wait. We'll pause here. While I'm gonna back up. Flip the sausage. One, two, flip. Wait. What? All right. There we go. You're stuck under the thing. I know. There we go. That's the problem with the skewers. So that's gotta cook till that. The sausage gotta cook till it's all that color, till it's all that brown. So you really just want to turn it instead yeah. of flipping it. All right. So Dan's an aspiring comic book writer. He's plotting out a story that's very female centric, and the story will heavily rely on them feeling like women. So his question is, what comic book or comic writer portrays female characters well? If you guys could give me some suggestions on trade paperbacks or current ongoings with strong females, that would be great. Well, you're going to look at uh, Greg Rucka and Brian Michael Bendis as the two biggest mainstream guys Joss to Whedon, do that. Joss Whedon. Joss Whedon is after that. But, Jerry Moore. But, but uh, if you want to look at mainstream comics, the ones who have the most backlog of stuff. Um, oh. <laughs> new shoes. My shorts. <laughs> They're camouflage. We can't see it anyway. This barbecue is coming off. Uh, uh, coming apart at the seams. Uh, okay. Strong female. <laughs> strong female characters. Uh, you've got. Uh, Queen and Country, Tara Chase. Although yeah. it's arguable if she's still strong or not. Uh, but before that, um, White Out. a strong character. It's true. Right, she's right, right. Going through problems. Right. Uh, before that, he did White Out, um, which is being made into a Carrie movie. Carrie Stetko. Carrie Stetko. And then he went on to do uh, uh, Wonder Woman, he did later. Whether pe some people like that a lot. A lot, people, people a lot of people liked it. I didn't really like it, but a lot of people um, didn't. And then he did, he did, his detective run was where he came up with Sasha Bordeaux, who's a fantastic character. Checkmate she's in, right? Yeah. Sure. Um, so Ruck is a guy who does that, and then Mendes is another guy who does that. Gotham Central with Rene Montoya. Exactly, I forgot about that. Uh, you've got Alias from Bendis. Yep. Um, fantastic stuff. And then he, he, he tends to pick a female character sometimes. To latch onto. Well, he did Jinx. I mean, one of his, Jinx. his big Spider indie Woman. books is Jinx, and he, yeah. that's... Uh, um, I get over my pants. So there's lots of stuff like that. There's others you're mentioning. Joss Whedon, obviously. Joss, Joss Whedon, Whedon, Buffy, Buffy, and also. Joss Whedon has a very non-creepy uh, affinity for uh, teenage girls. Kind of like Wolverine. <laughs> yes. Thank Took you. me a second, and I, I've got that. Yeah, yeah totally. No. Yeah, no, he is. And um, Buffy's really good, and his portrayal of Kitty Pride and Astonishing X-Men has been really good. Chris Claremont actually has written women really well. So some of the Storm issues mm -hmm. um, in the Uncanny, Uncanny X-Men in the late 100s, early 200s, um, he wrote some very strong women characters. Um, and then also, as I mentioned, from the more indie side, Terry Moore, who wrote basically just at, like an ode to women in, his, in Strangers yeah. in Paradise. So, you know. Uh, I would use the tongs as opposed to the thing. For my steak? Oh, no, for the... No. So, yeah. So, good luck with that. Maybe try there, emailing those guys. There's see what a they ton. Say. I mean, like, also... Um, you can look through the, some of the back issues of Birds of Prey. Yeah, oh, Chuck oh, Dixon did a really Chuck good... Chuck Dixon. Yeah, Chuck Dixon. Gail Simone. Gail Simone. That's she a, is a Well, I mean, we're talking about female writers. There's a lot of yeah. good female writers out there, too. Gail Simone yeah. does a good job. But Chuck Dixon, if you're talking about male writers who do a good job... Because this guy, is a, this is a dude writing, so he wants to know who he can emulate. He can emulate Chuck Dixon. He's like, yep. you know, Barbara Gordon. He had a really good handle on Barbara Gordon for a long time. Yeah, I want to get a good handle on Barbara Do you know what all those... You know we're doing a good thing here? You know, and, and you, gotta and go you have there. to go make it um, all creepy. Uh, what some, but what a lot of them say, I've heard, is that those female characters, actually, just on Bendis, uh, Dina Pilgrim in Powers is a oh, very yeah, yeah. non-traditional character, I think. A very strong, unique character who is who is a woman. I mean, when I say a woman, she's not, they didn't just write a guy and then put tits on her. Right. And she's not a girl. Right. 
She's, she's, she's a not strong innocent, character. She's not in trouble. She doesn't need to be saved. No, no. She, um, well, a lot of these guys, what they do is they, they take you know memories of people they knew and women and you write them as those characters that's a good way to do it to just be authentic instead of writing the woman who you want for yourself instead of writing the woman who is like your idea of the perfect woman mm -hmm. that shows through in comics a lot and I think, I think it, you're, it you're real close there yeah you don't want to overcook the steak. It's like, oh, it's no. sacrilege. For the sake of the show, I'm okay with it. Ah, look at this. I'm a freaking mess. I'll live. I got a plate. mess. So, all right, cool. Well, this is an iFanboy barbecue. <laughs> it's been fun to share it with you. Hopefully you're at home making your own barbecues, making your own meat. I'm in a festive mood, so I like the sparklers. He waves that damn thing around, and Bef I'm scared. Before I had it in my hair, and I was doing a dance routine in the pool. You're losing it there. Like a Busby Berkeley movie. These are hard to light, actually. These are only $1.99 at your local stop and shop or supermarket. Um, kids ask permission. They don't this really is like, not gonna so happen. Who this, this is not happening to you. Screw it. So I'm really hungry. My steak's ready. Um, so if you have any good recipes or any barbecue tips you want to share with us, or you don't agree with us about our steak Listen, methods, I'm sure we're going to get people who can say, you guys don't know the first thing about cooking meat. No, not me. I'm sure we're going to get letters saying, you guys don't know the first thing about cooking meat. You're wrong. Send them in. Go ahead. Fine. We're happy with that. But send in any questions you've got. We're going to do, you know, we like getting the email. We like doing the email shows. This is a variety of topics. So contact at ifanboy.com exactly. is where you send your meat complaints or recipes or questions. And we also like to get voicemails. Then the other way that you can do that is to call our voicemail line, which is 888-FANBOYS, which is 3262697, which we've all memorized now, by the way. Yes, we have. Very it's proud a, of you. To varying degrees of success. Um, uh, and you can call in with questions, comments, or anything like that. You want to do a, a question for the show, either the audio show or the video show, uh, you can leave them there. And you can head over to ifanboy.com where you can download the audio show, our weekly audio pick of the week podcast, where we talk about the best in comics that came out this past week, or every Wednesday. Wednesday, you can get another episode of this uh, this year video show um, that we partnered with our friends at Revision 3 about. Um, I think that's about it. We're done. My steak's ready. So time, to, go time to eat. Look